Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Tribble, issue number one. This is clearly a creator-owned comic book. This is uh, Brutal Planet Comics. Yeah. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the book itself after I start telling you the people who made the book. You know, the typical thing that I always do. Okay, so let's get started on this. Dre DeBrute Daniels, author, writer, storyboard, direction, and the guy who emailed me. Uh, Federico Avila Corsini, art, ink, colors, and letters. Also, B. Norad, the pilot art concepts. Okay, so here's the contact information for all these guys. Let's see if I can actually get in there. Hopefully that's in some kind of focus so you can actually see it. Otherwise, this was a waste of time. <laughs> anyway, so you can take a look at the art inside. This was actually really good. I enjoyed this. Um, I did judge a book by its cover. First, I had to actually get the book. Um, little confession here. It actually actually had the book for two weeks already and I, I just didn't get around to reviewing it my bad also tried to email you when I went in and saw the email uh it, yeah it uh it, it was in two different places and I deleted the one from the promotions section the, the the folder and I wanted to keep the one that was in the primary the problem is you delete one the other one disappears also must have been a glitch or something like that couldn't email you if I don't have your email my bad uh anyway book here reviewed cool stuff. Also, I judged this by the cover. I looked at it, I was like, it's a pretty cover, but I mean, like, I'm, I'm looking at the concept and all that stuff. I'm just thinking to myself, I'm probably not going to like this book, and that's going to stink. So, I wasn't overly motivated to check out the comic book. Look, cover, that is genuinely what we judge a comic book by. It's a great concept for it. Um, it's pretty good angle. Here's the thing. Cover, sometimes the paper, that's also what matters. Um... I do have like three suggestions for the book. Two of them have to do with the, um, uh, the, the paper. So there's the paper in the front and then the paper here, you know, in, inside the uh, internal paper. The internal paper, of course, nobody likes the paper on the inside when it's like this. It's that, that thick stuff. It's almost like, you know, like softer cardstock. Nobody likes that. But you know what they like less? Comic book with a cover. The, the, it looks like you could just... Ah, smudge the stuff away all right great great picture that would look a whole lot better on better cover paper is what it is and i know it's expensive i know it's expensive if you have the ability to find better you know for cheaper by all means please do the cover definitely more important than the inside but consider doing the inside for uh, also because there is going to be one more suggestion and is also around the art uh, but as far as the story itself, start off a little bit slow. Uh, just real quick, I'm going to show you some of the uh, interior art there also. I'm going to get a, a little bit more into the art uh, as well, obviously, later. But started off with um, a political story. This is both good and bad. Some people are turned off by a political story. But I think that more the more intelligent people who understand that making it a story that does have some politics in it makes the comic book more relevant. It makes it feel more local, like this could be a city or, you know, right outside your door or the next city over. You know what I'm saying? You know, this whatever. Um, it also feels like it's a history book if you're going to read this book 10 years you know, later, right? It looks like, oh wow, this is actually rooted in reality and something that people can actually understand and get behind, you know? So there's that. I always prefer there to be local politics, even if it's just a small glimmer in my comics, so this way I can actually feel like I'm there, have a reason why I would want to fight for this comic book, you know? Um, anyway, so the politic that they use in here, particularly, is somebody comes along and they poison a, uh, a rural area's uh, water supply. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, it's very hard to get yourself into. Like the cleaning crew often has, I know because I was on a cleaning crew for about a year to clean a, a water plant back in Jersey. Not easy to get on, man. They check everything. Anyway, so um, these guys somehow had access to get on there. And they decided to poison the area. Okay, so you basically gave the inhuman storyline. 
here's some kind of a foreign substance and certain people of a certain genetic code, in this particular case a blood type, uh, are going to wind up getting some kind of a superpower of some sort. We can monitor people that way. Okay, cool. Inhumans. Uh, do I have a problem with that? Hell no. Charlemagne the God made himself an inhuman two years ago in his New Year's Eve special, his New Year's book that he put out. It was the first comic book he ever did, so just go check out Charlemagne the God comic book. You'll find it. Believe me, you'll find it. It was a New Year's special. Uh, he did the main short story in there. Anyway, so yeah, you're in good company. You're in good company. <laughs> so, um... Uh, what do you call it? When push comes to shove, it's basically this guy called Zamir, Za for short. He's a local DJ. He's got this really great party to go to tonight and, and you know, blast his beats. It also happens to be his high school graduation. So, bada boom, last day of school. Dude's, he's, he's on cloud nine. And he's a good guy. People like him. People like when he's in their company. People like to be in their comp uh, in his company. It's like there's a friendship gravitational sphere of some sort going on. He actually seems loyal to his friends. The dude comes up. He's like, listen, man, I know this is your night and all that, but could I be your hype man for the night? He's like, are you kidding me? You've been there since the beginning. You're just as much a part of this as I am. Wow. Didn't go to his head. It could have. And I've seen it go to a lot of people's heads. Didn't go to this dude's head. He seems like a solid friend. Done. Done. You know, it's, it, what do you call it? The, the ladies want to be with him. The guys want to be him, right? Okay. Awesome. You got a good character there. Um, turns out though, that he is the specific blood type, obviously main character. Uh, and he's going to be subject to the changes that are going to be happening. The changes happen whenever there's sound introduced, like loud sound or music around him. Go figure. His life is music. Oh, yeah, this is not going to end well. The problem with the story as I see it is it's only issue one and it's only about the length of a standard comic book. And it's not enough pages. There's not enough room in here to actually tell the whole story. Uh, I don't expect the whole story to be given out, but the trick is it ends before we can see what his power is and how he's going to react to it. Like, the, the how he's going to react to it, how, you know, is he going to freak out? Is he going to right away be cool with it? You know, like, is there going to be a learning curve with it? Like, that's all stuff that I expect to see in an issue two. But by the end of issue one, I usually expect to be able to know what the guy's power is, at least the main aspect of his power, right? And I don't get that in this comic book, which is kind of a letdown. The only other thing that is kind of a letdown in this book also, but the thing that even more than the cover that I would recommend fixing, look, beautiful page, beautiful art. Damn, this is good. All right. And uh, I'm actually going to get to the good stuff in a minute. Look at the automatopias in there. Raz, Raz, Raz. Like that's his thing. They've actually got, he's actually got like some song in here, which is really good. Um, you can see the automatopias flying around in here. You can actually see the the, the words, like, you know, the, whether it's text box or whether it's uh, speech bubble, you know, you got to know that something's going on. There's, uh, what else is there? There's, there's others too. They actually do different shapes for the, um, uh, for the speech bubble, like if somebody's yelling or somebody's not, there we go. You see in there, like there's there's different shapes for and all that. And the only complaint I could say about the lettering is that there seems to be a little bit too much white in there. Maybe make the letters a little bit bigger or I honestly, I wouldn't even make the speech bubbles uh, smaller. I would make the letters just a little bit bigger. But for the most part, everything's done right like everything's done right in there. And the letters are always the thing that I say, that's the thing that makes a comic book look juvenile if, if you don't have a good letterer. So the person who did the letters in here, do, 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 the artist, art, ink, color, and lettering, freaking great job. You got your money's worth by getting somebody who can also do the lettering in a really good way, shown a good light on this comic book, right? Whole bunch of parts in here. Sometimes there's no speech, but you don't need it. Here's the problem that I have with the uh, the, the art. The, my main problem with this book. Look at her face. What's it missing? It's missing detail. And that's something that you're going to find throughout the book. For the most part, even though the main character is looking good and the colors do a lot of shade for the comic book, it's something I praise Federico Blee for, right? Here's the problem. You still need an inker. Okay, the artist actually does his own inks. For me, sometimes... Sometimes, if you have an artist that's good with this, that, and the other thing, but not good with his own inks, it's one of the reasons why they have somebody 
who will just do inks. It's the same thing why I say about don't be your own proofreader, uh, proofreader. Proofread your own books. Why wouldn't you? But also actually hire a proofreader. They're called editors, right? And they're there for a reason. Excuse me. They'll be that critical eye that you can't be because while we're our own best critics or, or we're our own worst critics, the fact of the matter is you still need actual critics. So find somebody to be an editor. I didn't notice an editor in this book. You might have gotten lucky, but I promise you, your luck won't last forever. You need an editor, a dedicated editor. That being said, you also need an inker, a separate inker. Now, on average, an inker, like professionally for Marvel and DC and all that stuff, they get $200 per page. Eee, that's a lot. Fortunately, you don't actually have to do <laughs> somebody that deep. Find somebody who likes the, find somebody whose inks you actually like and consider if you can afford it getting a, a good inker because sometimes the pages themselves may actually try and find a different page instead of the same page. Um, oh, here's, here's one with Dick Root. Um, <laughs> as Joe Rogan would say, look at that dude's almost buck naked. Anyway, um, inks doesn't just mean coloring black in where there's supposed to be a lot of black. No, nope, sorry. Uh, it actually means sometimes taking the work that you have and then putting a lot more definition on it. Sometimes you just consider that finishes, all right? But it's putting detail in places for someone who actually understands in a solid way how shadow is supposed to work so you can see contour lines on the face better. There's an image in here of an old guy and the inks look decent on that one, but on all the other pages, the people just look like Mm, no fine edges. And we, in general, we have fine edges. You know what I'm saying? Hair isn't just black and we're done. You know? Um, people have, like, stubble. People have features. They actually have features, right? You can see that the light is moving on my head and on, and you can't only rely on the colors to do that. Um, if you have a colorist as good as, like, let's say, a Federico Bley, uh, a Paul Mounts, you can, but you don't in this case. Uh, so possibly hiring a separate inker would honestly make this book a, an infinite, in, infinity amount better. Seriously, that's real talk. My number one gripe about this comic book, the people just don't look that real. There's some good images in here where people are blurred, but even blurred images should probably be shaded, should probably have some more detail instead of just oh, look, it looks like somebody's spinning their head really fast doing the editing thing, so it looks like it's a blurred out head. No, I don't want to, I, I, I just don't want to see stuff like that. Um, so the book is fantastic. Having one artist, hopefully cost-effective, might actually benefit from getting an inker on here also. No disrespects to the guy who did, like, if you can do all this stuff and letters, money's worth, baby but consider inks. <laughs> that being said, this actually looks like a good story. It definitely left me wanting more. Not in the best of ways. Like I said, I at least have liked to have known his powers so I could see, am I interested in seeing how this guy's gonna use his powers? But how he's gonna react to him and all that stuff, I fully expect, and his first heroic exploit, is it a heroic exploit? We'll see. That's what I generally um, expect to see in a second issue. First issue, kind of ended like a page earlier. <laughs> anyway, guys, this was still a good book. Definitely consider checking it out. If you can find these guys online, uh, they're promising that Facebook seems to be the, seems at least to be the best place to find these guys where you can actually keep updates on what's about to happen next. Like the further ongoing, are they going to do a Kickstarter or something like that? So that seems to be the place to check out. Anyway, guys, good comic book. I enjoyed it. I think you'll like it too. Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.